Our next video is gonna be Moonshine's Hydrolux Whizbang electric motor for the live wire for 157% improvement over stock, guaranteed. You're Jacob's pulling up on the live wire. I want to talk about it because for one, I want to I have a message for California. Nashville is all future, okay? We're electric as fuck. So you can kiss my ass. Right here, both cheeks. California, kiss my ass. Come over here. Jacob. The future is now. Soon you'll be able to sit on your couch and play a video game with someone in Singapore. So, welcome to the live wire. So, I want to talk about a couple things on this thing before we get started. One, it is super safe. People are, have a misconception that these electric vehicles are, you know, just a, a, a fire waiting to happen. These RESS systems, which is this big thing that looks like a battery. It actually is not. This is the rechargeable energy storage system. And I will not tolerate it being called anything but. Uh, it has Showa inverted, adjustable front suspension and rear, both rebound and compression damping con uh, adjustments on both shocks. The whole thing is just gnarly. <laughs> Maintenance of these vehicles is the same intervals as a regular Harley Davidson. So you have a 1K service, 5, 10, 15, 20. Now, the, there is fluid, believe it or not. There is oil in the transmission. It is specially refined oil that is not actually for sale. When you get your 1K and your 20K service, we will do a transmission service. We check the gear lash. Now, the gear lash is basically what determines the noise. So there's a pinion gear and a ring gear and they come together and the closer those gears mesh, the, w the more wine you have, the farther away they are, the more chatter you have. So there are specs that we check them to on your 1K service. The transmission oil is not serviceable. We empty and fill it during the transmission last service at the dealership. The RESS has a five year warranty that is conditional. It depends. There, there's some things that you need to know about this. It's not, a, it's not like your a regular car. The rest of the vehicle has Harley's standard unlimited mileage two-year warranty. So some of the interlocks, this has a lot of safety features built into it. If you come over here and look at the instrument module, this is the run position. Now there are, the propulsion system will not work if the side stand is down. There is no zero throttle. Or if you haven't pressed the start button, which for traditional Harleys is the same start button. Now, if I have the throttle pulled back, I cannot press the start button. There's no go. If the fork is in lock mode, it won't allow it to start. Or if, there, if the OBC or any of the onboard computers detect something wrong with the RESS, it will not allow the motorcycle to get engaged in propulsion mode. We'll go over some of the cool features of this, Jacob. So all you need to do to turn it on, sit on it. So when I turn this on, side stand is up. There are no interlocks. Press the start button. And it is ready to go. If you pull the throttle, if you twist the throttle, it'll go forward. That's all there is. I know it's weird that it, it doesn't have a clutch, but it's it's so it's not like a internal combustion engine. You don't feel like you need to shift when you're giving it gas. The power there's power all the time. So, you know, when you're riding through the gears on a on a internal combustion engine and you you ride up, you feel okay. I'm getting to the top of the power band. I need to shift. I need to shift. I need to shift. There is none of that. There is no top of the power band. And in these videos right here i was not pulling it back farther because i was nervous i mean it goes i, I wasn't going 100 percent throttle yeah. the power is instant and it's always on
this is road mode. Mileage mode, road mode. how fast it accelerates huh it just takes off I, I took that with you from a dig and you were gone <laughs> yeah Hey, I think you caught me getting squirrely there when I hit the gas. <laughs> so there's four riding modes from the factory. This mode button right here is all you gotta do. You can change back and forth. Here they are. This is rain mode. So this is low power, high traction. Traction control is on. You cannot turn the traction control off in this mode. It is designed to prevent the rear wheel from slipping in slick conditions. This is also a good one if you want to let your friends ride your bike and they want to say, well, I want to see how this thing does. If you put it in rain mode, they're not going to be able to get the full power out of the motorcycle. This is distance mode or economy mode. The leaf kind of says it all. Road mode. So if you're just riding around in traffic and you're just going here to there and you're not really trying to get the most out of it, this is uh, just kind of a good balance between all of them. Now, I'm not sure what... I don't have it memorized what, how much a percentage of everything is in each mode, but that really isn't that important. I mean, once you own it, you'll, you'll figure that out quickly. And then there's sport mode. Sport mode is rapid acceleration, rapid regeneration. And by regeneration, there is an engine brake. That's what it feels like. The, the, the electric motor, which is right here, will actually almost re it will reverse and start feeding power back into the back into the RESS which you can see right here whatever mode you're in and I've got a good shot of that on our on the video riding around in two different modes right here but you can see how much this is your power available and this is how much regeneration there is available and you can see it turn orange when I accelerate and green when I decelerate that deceleration or the regeneration process is feeding power back into the RESS so that I can use for later. And the different modes have different amounts of power and different amounts of regeneration. So road mode does not have the, the braking feel of the regeneration process, the sport mode does, because it only has so much of the regeneration, it's not full on. This is your distance meter, your battery life, battery temperature. This is your the temperatures of the, basically the onboard system, the electric, the uh, the motor, the control motor, the battery. This is hooked to Jacob's iPhone right now, so you can control your music and your phone. So this becomes a hub. It doesn't have a navigation or an infotainment center like a traditional Harley. It uses the TCU and the HD app on your phone and basically becomes a mirror. So you can control your phone through the, the display 
but your phone stays in your pocket. So if you're list if you're riding around on the on the roads just having a good time, your phone's in your pocket, you have headphones on, you can control the music, navigation, incoming phone calls, which uh, he actually gets an incoming phone call when we're on the ride and it shows up on my display and you can see that one right here. And you just like twist it without like one hand off of it. You know what I mean? Does it have like a does it know incoming call, Harley Rob. Is that that must be you. And this is by pushing the uh, the, to the right, the control, the toggle to handle your display. On the left, see it's connected to Jacob's iPhone. His phone has 71% battery left, so you can monitor your, your cell phone battery usage as well. The navigation is connected, but he doesn't have any waypoints, and it's not hooked up. So what's interesting is if I push this, with the navigation, you can control, you control volume, you can control the different things, the different functions of what's on your screen on the left control. So in addition to the four modes that come from the factory, there's three user customizable modes that you can take these four modes and create your own. So if you really like the snappy acceleration of sport mode, but you don't like 100% regeneration, if it's too much braking, you know, if you, for, for whatever reason, you can put 100% throttle and down your, your regeneration percentage so that it doesn't have quite as much engine braking and it's just crazy. And I mean, basically, every time you, you hit this button, it's a different tune. It's a different dyno tune. It's great. It's awesome. These will also you can change on the fly while you're riding. It doesn't do it instantly. There is a couple second delay because it's not safe to be looking at this when you're switching into from road to sport mode. So you hit the button, then you look up, then it switches and you can feel it. You can feel the different mode engage into the motor. Let's go over to the charging station and we'll talk about how you take care of it. And we're back. The charging station. A huge network of charging stations all over the country that you have access to. You can access them on your Harley app. It's called this. I don't remember what it's called now, so we'll have to put that in later. It is, that's what it is. Charge point? Yes, charge point. <laughs> Look at this. So. <laughs> it's right. Sw swimmy, swammy, Swanson, swammy. Check the briefcase. Oh, Samson, I, I was way off. <laughs> you also get free charges at your Harley dealership, your local Harley dealer. So, when you plug it in to charge it, we're not gonna we're not gonna go through the charge point station. This is what you need to do. There are. This has level one and level three charging. We have the DC fast charge which is level three, and the AC charge. Now, for your warranty to be valid, you want four to one AC charging versus DC fast charge. The AC charge will charge this RESS to complete capacity in right around eight hours. Now, this can be plugged right into a wall socket at your home. It needs around 11 to 15 amps, so you're not gonna wanna put it on the same circuit as your deep freeze or you know, the, the, your, your table saw in the garage. You're gonna want it to be on an outlet that's fairly free of, of other things while it's charging. The uh, indicator on the cable will let you know that it's going and there's a demonstration that we'll do right here. Okay, so you can see when you plug it in, the light is blue. Now when I bring it over here and I connect it to the vehicle, Now, if you come over here, it flashes blue. When the battery is full, it goes back to solid blue and it will estimate a time to full in a, in a minute. Here we go. And plugged into the wall, we've got 51 minutes before this is ready to rock and roll. So I rode this for 30 minutes probably, nonstop running around trying to get the other footage and we used 8% of the battery so if I was to go take this to, say, a coffee shop or a bar, go have a drink with my buddies, plug this in outside and charge it, I hang out for, we're now at 46 minutes. I hang out for 46 minutes. Now, with the Harley Davidson app, I can track that on my phone. It will tell my phone how much time I have so I can have my beer, my coffee, get lunch, whatever, while it's recharging back to 100% and then go to the next leg of my destination. 
Always plug the charger into the wall and then into the OBC. Unplug it from the OBC and then unplug the wall. One more thing I want to show you about the charging port. The motorcycle comes with this piece right here. Now part of the smart technology that, that Harley put into this If I'm out and about and I go to a charging station, I plug this piece in, plug that in, it takes up this gap. Now, if I take this fob and I leave the vehicle, it will lock this in place so that you can't pull it out. Even if you push the deal, it's locked so someone else cannot go to your charging station, take your plug out on your dime, plug theirs in and charge their electric vehicle. This piece stops them from being able to get inside and pull the lock out and I can't take this piece out once it's plugged in. The DC fast charge will charge the battery in about an hour. So what does that mean to you? If I purchase a live wire and I think I can't ever ride this bike, it doesn't have any range, but I like riding sport bikes and I like to go to work and I want a commuter vehicle, and I ride say 20 miles to work. This has roughly around 100, 120 miles range, okay? So I ride maybe 20 miles and I ride to work. When I get to work, I plug it in. I work, then I unplug it when it's full. I ride it home, I plug it in, I unplug it when it's full. My battery is pretty much always charged. Now, this is a, the advanced technology in this battery it does not develop a memory. It will have a state of health that will drop over time, as all batteries do. So you do not want to leave it plugged in all the time. You want to run it and run it down and then charge it up and run it down and charge it up. Part of the service intervals is your dealership will print the, the motorcycle condition report. The motorcycle condition report will determine the state of health of the, of the RESS as well as the charging habits. Now, if you are on a Saturday and you want to ride around and you feel like hot riding and you want to be on this all day and you ride at 67 miles, you use your charge point access, you find, these, you find places with DC fast charge, you go to a bar, they've got a DC fast charge, you plug it in, you go in, you have a drink, you've got your HD app, you're monitoring, it's 27 minutes to get it full, it's full, you have your one drink, peace. You ride 74 mile, more miles, you stop and you have lunch somewhere that has a charge point. It's full, you ride it again and you do it again all day and you use DC fast charge all day. That is not going to hurt the battery because all of those times using the AC slow charge is going to maintain the battery. The battery cells are intelligent and they equalize each other so that they maintain the same float. The DC fast charge doesn't really do that. And the DC ch fast charge charges at 80% at full capacity, and then it actually drops it down and charges the final 20%. And that is so that it uh, doesn't get it real hot and it can do a little bit more of uh, cell equalization. Here's your, your AC port with the, with the light indicator that is stored underneath the seat. The seat has a pull out this way that unlocks the tab comes up and has an automatic lock. Okay, and then plug in just like, and this is part of the uh, setup process that your dealership will do for you. And then here is the storage location for the rubber lock piece for when you're at a charge point. Push this button right here. Seat comes back in. Done. If you need to store the vehicle 30 days, make sure the RESS has at least 80% battery. 30 to 60 days, the, the RESS is at least 80% charged, and you want to plug it in and charge it once a month. If you're storing it longer than 60 days, there's actually a secondary battery on this vehicle. There's a small lithium battery right down here under the motor in the back. This battery serves the function to turn this on. That battery is solely used 
So when you hit this switch, it powers up the computers and the controls. Once everything is done and you have a green light to go and you hit the start button, that battery is no longer required. You're running off the RESS after that. Now the RESS and the OBC, which is your onboard charger, they will send a float charge to that small battery and keep it charged. But if you're going to store this for an extended period of time and you have power once every 30 days, plug it in. If you do not have a power source, take out the lithium battery, put that on a lithium type float charger. Make sure that this has at least 80% charge and remove the main fuse. That will take care of your warranty and you will be able to maximize your five year warranty. Now, if you have two years and your battery, your, your RESS will not stay charged and you're only getting 40 or 50 miles before it's empty. And then you go to your dealer and say, Hey, there's something wrong with my live wire. It's only going 50 miles of charge. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to plug it in and do a motorcycle uh, condition report. If that MCR shows that you charge it five times fast for every one slow charge, we do not make the warranty decisions. We initiate a warranty claim and we send that to Harley Davidson. They contact whoever they need to contact. They determine warranty. And if they determine that you have not properly maintained the RESSS, they will not warranty it. And I imagine in six years, the, R the RESS is gonna be advanced dramatically from where it is now. This technology is never gonna go backwards. It's gonna to continue to go forward. And I think that's it. You got any questions? Anything I left out, do you think? Yep. So one thing I forgot to mention a minute ago when we had the bike sitting here with Jacob is there is a company that Harley Davidson has partnered with called Electrify America. And through their network, when you purchase the bike, you register with them, you get 500 kilowatts of free charging time at any of their stations, anywhere that they're located in any zone of any quadrant of any state, county, municipality, uh, federal, or international government that they exist. The, the RESS is 15 kilowatts, so a 500 kilowatt credit is roughly 30 charges, 30 full charges for them at no cost. After that, the membership is free, and there are different levels of subscriptions that you can sign up for to pay by the minute. Some of you can waive the connection fee, or you can pay a connection fee. And I'm not 100% sure how all the levels of the, of the subscriptions, but once you sign up, everything is right there. It's super easy and it's a pretty badass partnership for Harley to do to make sure that you're going to be able to get the most out of this new platform. When it's here and you ride it and you're on it, you're like, this is not a gimmick, man. Yeah. Yeah, this is no joke. They didn't, they didn't fuck around. You know, and, and there's a lot of other companies out there doing electric motorcycles, but there is not any other company with the infrastructure that you're gonna get, the backing and the history of Harley Davidson to be able to make sure that this is taken care of the way it's supposed to. I mean, if you get one of these other brands and something goes wrong and you're 250 miles from a dealership, what are you gonna do? What are they gonna do? You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Here, how far are you from a Harley Davidson dealership in America? Maybe 50, 60, 70 miles at the most. And we're gonna come pick it up. I mean, if, if you go to turn this thing on and it says call service, or if you suspect there's something wrong with this, we're gonna go get it and we're gonna take care of it because Harley Davidson is gonna stand behind their product. All you need to do is plug it in once a month, charge it AC four to one to your DC, which is, it's, you're gonna do that anyway because you're only gonna have one of these charge point DC fast charge level three chargers out when you're out somewhere. You're not gonna have that at home. You're not gonna have it at your job most likely. So you're, and, and even if you do ride it to work, you're gonna charge it while you're inside. Now, another important thing to note about the charging system that it's not a float charger. So you don't wanna plug it in and just let it stay plugged in all the time. When it's charged, unplug it. It will not drain the power very quickly. So this isn't a Harley Davidson charger. This is a, so this is the same charger that all the Leafs, the Volts. Now the Teslas have their own because you, you could get the charge point app and it'll tell you where they are. Do you have your phone on you? What's going to be amazing is he's going to look up charge point. Now you don't even know these things are out there until you get this app and you look at it. 
Yeah, and put charge point in my area. And I, I, there's, I looked it up yesterday when I was doing the, the uh, PDI, and I think there's like 22 of these stations within yeah, 10 so miles here. in charge point of Nashville. It's just Nashville. So and that's just the charge point. So <laughs> there are other charging stations that aren't charged, that aren't charge point, that use the same connectors. Are there any other damn questions? Well, somebody's supposed to go, where can I get some damn bait? You know? <laughs> and cut.